welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some spooky plaza. Excited for this one. We're going to be playing a very low to the ground aggressive deck built around the newest Demacia landmark, the Grand Plaza. As y'all know, if you've been watching me uh, play with and against the Grand Plaza, I think really, really highly of this card. And that's maybe what you've been experiencing too if you've been playing Legends of Runeterra since the uh, last expansion came out. This card is, is simply incredible. Every single ally that is summoned, it gets plus one, plus one in Challenger this round. Pretty incredible. What we're going to do is we're going to pair that with a really aggressive deck. You can see um, we have 11 cards, so over 25% of the deck costs zero or one mana. When you get to just two mana or less, that's um, 28 of our 40 cards, so 70% of our deck is going to cost two or less mana. So we are going to get on the board immediately, um, be attacking, and help use Grand Plaza to finish games. Um, and then also, like, the turn that we play Grand Plaza, we can also unload our hand and play a bunch of stuff because we, we're going to have zero mana cards. We're going to have a pesky, pesky Specter and a Ravenous Butcher. So both of these can come down for zero mana. So, like, even if we have the attack token on turn three... We can play the Grand Plaza on turn three and still play some zero mana units to get some challenger, especially like Ravenous Butcher s sacrificing a Cursed Keeper so that then we get the 5-4 with challenger escaped abomination. That could be kind of crazy. Still turn one though. We could, If we have these first three cards in our hand on turn one, we can play Bark Beast, play the Spectre, Ravenous Butcher away the Spectre, and we have six power on turn one attacking. It's going to be a lot of damage, and it's going to be difficult for our opponents to stabilize. Um, so that's what we that's what we have going on. We also have a little bit of a, a late game with some Stalking Shadows being able to draw two cards, Glimpse Beyond being able to draw two cards. So it's not like you know we don't have any card draw. We have both of those that draw two cards and get us to the to the uh, late game. Warren's Prey, of course, also generating some more cards for us. So let's give it a try. We're going real low to the ground. Only Grizzled Ranger is the only thing that I have that costs more than three. And everything else is uh, three or less. Yeah, no, I, I didn't play Senna. I just don't. I just don't want that many three mana cards. And I, I think really highly of Callista. And so we have Callista, Caretaker, Plaza. I just don't want more three mana cards. So we're playing against Burn. This could actually work because I may need single combat to like take down a Teemo. So I don't really want to mulligan that. Grizzled Ranger can be two bodies. So I guess I'll, I'll mulligan the Grizzled Ranger. Yeah, I think Spectre is just going to make... I think the Pesky Spectre is just going to make a lot of our other cards better. You know, it's not anything that's super powerful on its own. With a Ground Plaza, it is a 0 mana 2-2 two -two challenger with Ephemeral. You know, basically a sapling, right? It's a 0 mana sapling with the Ground Plaza. But even without the Ground Plaza... It makes like your Blighted Caretaker a lot better. Uh, be able, you know, just play it, play Caretaker. It can make... Um, uh, so yeah, it helps out there. It helps out with the Ravenous Butcher. It can just get Glimpse Beyond. I have my orders. I think I want to just kill a Boom Crew Rookie. Yeah, because I have, I have Caretaker that can take down the Teemo the next turn. Let's just get rid of a Rookie. Something that costs 0 or 1 mana? No, 2 mana, no. I need something that costs 0 or 1 mana. The Caretaker. No, two mana again. Oh, that caretaker away, Callista. I need it between my my draw step or or that warden spray. I need something that costs zero or one mana. I mean, yeah, I could stalking shadows, but if I play if I play stalking shadows, I don't get to caretaker, and that's like the important thing is is caretaker this turn to kill Teemo. I guess, so I guess that means they're going to strike me again with Teemo. So if we are resigned to the fact that they're going to be striking me again with Teemo... 
Grizzled Ranger is the card that makes the most sense to play. No refunds. No one's the wiser. That obviously did not work. That was a great use cast salesman. Great hand for them. Turn one Teemo, turn two Boom Crew Rookie. Turn three Boom Crew plus Saboteur. Turn four Use Cast Salesman plus Saboteur. It's just a crazy good hand. All right, so Callista will level up before she dies. And then obviously our very next card is the one mana card that I wanted. <laughs> this is the very next card. Oh, she's not leveling. She's not at two. She's at one. Sorry, my bad. My fault. Push back the darkness. I can do this. The two life with the thorny toad is pretty nice, though. I think those two cards had one puff cap on them. Let's make it deep. And another salesman for blocking purposes. That is quite nice. Come, come this way. Burn away the shadows. Their hand has been something else. But the good news is we are at 10. The Boom Crew can attack us down to 8, but you know, like, so we're kind of stabilizing. We're gonna take the Warden's Prey, look for like another Thorny Toad or something like that. If I take the Spectre, I can I can play Callista and three Spectres, and then end of turn, all the Spectres die, my Callista levels up. I don't know if that's the best play. Or just going like Blighted Caretaker. Oh, come on. That one had the Puff Cap on it. Try that out. Safety disengage. Okay, keeper is number four, so then caretaker would be caretaker in the two, and so my four three gets obliterated. What does he want from me? I don't have room for the four three, so we'll play the warden's prey. Obviously, I really don't want to see Decimate. That's that's the card that I'm really worried about. Please, no Decimate. But obviously, we're doing our best to try to win this turn. Ha! Made them draw the, the pesky Spectre. Instead of them drawing a Burn spell. And now putting Grizzled Ranger. And then Grizzled Ranger will die. Give me a 3-4. Good job, pesky Spectre. They're like hoping to top deck a burn spell, draw that thing. All right, there we go, GG's. One and oh, and no plaza. 
Oh, looks like I, I never completed the previous prediction. Alright, start for this one. What do we have? We have Victor Zoe. I think I mulligan the Stalking Shadows. Maybe I keep one Stalking Shadows. I just don't want to spend too much mana on Stalking Shadows early. Ugh. So we're going to have the attack token turn four. Push back to darkness. Mafia plot, resubbing for four months. Thanks, Mafia plot. Look. Third sub of the day. Looks like maybe I shouldn't have let that hit me. Needed pesky specter here. That'd have been a great time to hit pesky specter, where it would have had, you know. Spectre plus Caretaker, and then also the other Spectre with Ravenous Butcher. So I want to single combat that thing. They could cast the super cool star chart in response. Yeah, I mean, I guess I have to. That'd be that'd be the thing number three to die. This is thing number three to die. I think I just Spectre right now to make sure that Lucian levels up. Because best case, like, next turn I want to go Spectre and then Caretaker and then Lucian levels up. But if they have, if they have another Mystic Shot, or, you know, like any kind of, you know, like they use like a Mystic Shot and Aftershock, anything like that, then my Lucian doesn't level up. And with having these other Lucians in hand, I think that I have to... I can't go for, like, the really high upside. I just have to make sure that we're leveling up Lucian. So hopefully we draw a, a cheap unit. Like, our whole deck is cheap units. Mmm, that one's really too expensive. That's too bad. This has been a pretty awkward game. We have drawn very poorly this game. We've drawn very poorly. Time for another whooping. Safety disengaged. Prime and ready. Why couldn't I had you last turn? Damage. System upgrade. Rise, metal brethren. So 
I'm one mana short from going Curse Keeper, Caretaker, and two Relentless Pursuits. I could just go Caretaker right now. And then the two Relentless Pursuits. I guess I don't need the Cursed Keeper. There you are. This gives me a four health unit to be able to block as well, which helps me stay alive better. Down to five. All right, that should be game. We got there. Oh no! Maybe we didn't get there. Oh, that behold the infinite cost zero. Okay, I was thinking that. Okay, never mind. So yeah, that, that thing cost zero. Then they got something that cost zero. So I go pursuit. They block, block. I pursuit again. They block. I guess it makes sense to go Callista and just one pursuit. We shall pierce their treasonous hearts. And just keep the other pursuit for the next turn. Okay. Put to rest. Okay, looks like we have a, a mirror kind of match. They're going with Garen for their other champion. So they're going to be going bigger. Usually in mirror matches, the deck that goes bigger wins. So that's not that's not a great sign for me. Right, the, the worthy, more aggressive deck in a mirror match where they go bigger. I think I'm going to want to cast Docking Shadows. Okay, so we're going to have Bark Beast. Wait, no, I probably want Caretaker. Yeah, what am I thinking? I want Caretaker. I was going to take Bark Beast because of the one mana. But we're going to want Caretaker. Either go Grizzled Ranger or Caretaker this turn. Yeah, yeah. Let's go with the Grizzled Ranger. And then if they stop this, I can just still go Pesky Spectre. The Surprise Spectre. Next turn, another plaza. All right, I need to write you down to the VIP list. Don't get in my way. Let's see. 
All right, let's go like this. We do 10 damage to them. We just, we just can't go wide enough. Basically. We need to be able to go, yeah, we need to be able to go wider. Doesn't all that armor slow you down? Slow and steady wins the war. Oh. Break their ranks! Okay. Got a single combat out of their hand. Stay resolute. I don't know, that's that's probably just not even worth playing. Yeah, I, I guess that's just yeah, that's just not even worth playing. They're gonna be like a judgment deck? Like they're just not playing anything like ever. Are they gonna be they're gonna be playing judgment. Boys, we are Filthy creatures. Not really sure if I'm supposed to be playing around judgment or not. See, that's only nine damage. Is a judgment. So it really felt like it had to be a judgment. We must not relent. Definitely felt like it had to be judgment. Blockers. No room for doubt. Make sure I don't just die to a, a pump spell. That's gonna do it. What do we get with Reforge? Overwhelm? That doesn't really help. I've got your back. That's gonna do it. Alright, Judgment and Radiant Guardian. And just Garen in general. Yep. It just went, went a little too big for me. Okay, another kind of similar, you know, another similar deck. They're definitely going to be a plaza deck as well. They're going to be going a little bigger, but they don't have Garen and hopefully not Radiant Guardian. Because, you know, like that means, you know, no Garen probably means no judgment. We do have the attack token on turn three for the caretaker. That's good. Let's keep those and let's look for plaza. Let's look for plaza. Gonna hold the Spectre for the Caretaker. We could go Spectre Glimpse Beyond, but uh, then you're like, what are we doing with the Caretaker? 
I'm just gonna hold the hold the two spell mana for the stalking shadows. I could pass priority there, but you know this is again still passes priority. I want them to you know I hope there we go good. I'm gonna say I want them to play something else. Ideally. What do I think the best Victor deck may look like? It's a good question. Certainly needs to have... Needs to have like ways to be able to help Victor stay in play for a while. Victor is a champion that you want to have in play as long as possible. Yeah, yeah, I'm a... So the bad news is I can't find Plaza. The good news is they can't find Plaza either. Time to get rowdy. Can't play Callista and Caretaker. <laughs> Made them draw Pesky Spectre. That's a shiny ribbon. They got the prismatic. Oh, it does have like a little bit of animations in the background and stuff. I was okay. There is like a little bit of animation there with the with the background. Plaza, let's go. Even a fragment snuffs out lives. How do they have four blade fragments? Make these pieces whole. How do they have four blade fragments? Didn't they just reforge with like just the, the three one and then the Riven got them one? How'd they get the others? Oh, oh, the first one was... The first thing was the weapon hilt, which got the third one. Okay, it wasn't four blade fragments. It was a weapon hilt. They got a reforge, and then they had the three reforge, and then that. Gotcha. Okay. Fair enough. Um. Let's see. I guess. I guess I need to clear up space for Caretaker anyway. There you are. I should have played the Ephemeral Blighted Caretaker. Kind of switched what I wanted to do here. I'm doing this to level up Callista before Callista attacks. And also we get the escaped abomination, which is going to be a 5-4. Five 5-4 four. Five is a good challenger. Four three is also a good challenger. Blighted Caretaker. That's the biggest one. Uh. 
Blades. All right, we'll try to kill their Riven and that. Hmm. Why couldn't I have had you last turn, Black Spear? Kill this thing. Hopefully it works. Okay, cool. Alright, so Callista puts a Grizzled Ranger into play now. Let's go that route. Because I should have played Callista last turn. Yeah, I should have played Callista during their turn. It's too bad. have the blockers as long as they don't have overwhelm oh no oh no I have to block that thing twice that's annoying oh wait badger bears a three four never mind I can block it twice heart and blade both broken No attacks. Cause yeah, if I just attack, they only have two blockers, or you know, like they have three blockers, three things. How do I get punished for playing Curse Keeper first before attacks? I don't think I do. It basically, means like if they just drew single combat. Like, because if they if I just attack and they just drew single combat, they stay alive. Nothing gets between oh, you. that's how. Quinn. Okay, well. to track Fall by my sword. Mm. I would have just attacked would have had a Valor. We'll see if I lose this game now. Hopefully not. But I definitely could, you know, like if they just got overwhelmed with the ribbon. Here we go. Gosh. Probably will. And that was a tough choice whether or not to attack. Yeah, that's definitely game. Great, great top decks, you know, top deck Quinn, top deck Katarina. GG's. I sense their power. Now, quick attack multiple times, also. It wasn't enough. You always open attack in those situations. Because they'd already played all their house fighters. So I wasn't expecting the multiple blockers, but yeah, the Quinn. So in Nivea Braum, we have to play a little bit more defensive. We need these. Uh, I think we need like these kind of 
cards, you know, like Sharp Sight, these pump spells to help protect stuff. There's a kill in the air. I basically don't want to play Bark Beast and let the Bark Beast just die immediately to whatever. No room for doubt. I'm going to hold on to the Bark Beast for a minute. I don't want, you know, Vile Feast. Anything like that. Rum is on the job. Yeah, yeah, I'm up. Alright, let's mess some folks up. We could have a lot of attacks this turn. Go Withering Whale. The box. I think I let that happen. Oh wait, yeah, Sharpside doesn't even save anyway. So they can't Ruination next turn. So probably going to be going with the Relentless Pursuit this next turn. Before they can Ruination. Return to us. The chains! They never stop! Good luck! All right, Lucian leveled up. Now pursuit. The grove follows. And now the sapling dies, so that then we get to rally again. And so then we'd have another attack, and that'll be game. GG's. Okay, so I think our deck was pretty awesome, to be honest. So we, we played two mirror matches and, um, you know, mirror-ish type matches, like other Grand Plaza decks. We played against two other Grand Plaza decks, and those were both of our losses. Now, one of them, you know, like, one of them just, they went bigger. They had Garen, Judgment, Radiant Guardian. Those cards are going to be a problem, especially, you know, like the Judgment. Whenever I'm, you know, my whole point of my deck is going wide, attacking wide. I, I am very weak to Judgment. And then, of course, Radiant Guardian also, right? Like, I'm not trying to necessarily, yeah, like Radiant Guardian, also a great card against me. So they had, they had two, if you go through, like, all of the cards in the whole game, Judgment and Radiant Guardian are two of the very best ones against me, honestly. So they had that, and um, so that's okay. You know, like, sure, we lose that. And then the other one was one where it was pretty disappointing the loss. If I would have just simply open attacked, we would have won, and I didn't, and we ended up losing. It was a, it was a tough decision whether or not to play that Curse Keeper, and obviously I picked wrong. Um, but, you know, good learning, right? Like, that's, you know, whenever you're at the beginning of the format like this, it's, it's all about learning. Um, but I really liked our deck. I really liked how we were, how low to the ground we were. I, I, I liked having cards like Pesky Specter, and I thought that that was good of just being able to just unload your hand very quickly and just get get on the board really quickly, um, and put just lots of pressure on the opponent. We, you know, we didn't have much fluffed. You know, like we didn't have expensive cards or anything that were chewing up our hand. No Scytheria or Remembrance or uh, Chronicler of Ruin or anything like that. Not even Senna. I didn't have Senna. For, for any of these, like no Hecarim, you know, Hecarim too expensive. I liked, I liked our curve. I liked ha having all sorts of cheap stuff. Um, 
and yeah, I, I enjoyed playing this deck. I thought it was I thought it was really strong, and uh, yeah, I think I think it worked out really well. All right, but that's Spooky Plaza. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there and let me know what you think of the deck. Let me know what you think of this really aggressive version of a Grand Plaza deck. Um, and if you try it out later yourself, uh, let me know how it goes for you. You know, like if you're somebody on YouTube who tries the deck, um, yeah, leave those comments. Let me know how, how you like it, how it's going. All right, but that's it here for the Spooky Plaza. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.